Hello and welcome to my new video on the NVIDIA GTX 560 Ti Super Overclock Edition. Remember my old Radeon HD 5770? Well, it goes to the bin. Yep. And you want to see that in slow motion? Here we go. There, in the bin. How nice was that? Then we'll see it again? Let's see a different one. Yeah. One more time? Why not? In the bin. Perfect. Now, I'm going to put this in later, but first I need to show you what I'm doing for cooling. This is an Arctic Cooling F12 fan, uses the hydrodynamic bearing or fluid dynamic bearing, depends where you read, and these fractal design uh, supposed to be vibration reducing fan mounts. We'll, we'll see, I guess. So, fitting the fan mounts isn't too bad, you just literally pull them through. Some would argue easier than a screw, but others wouldn't, like me. But yeah, they're on there, all four of them, just rubber things that stick out of a fan. And all you do to put them on is just pull them through, as you'll see in just a second. I do the first one out of shot, and then I realise I'm out of shot. So we go, one, two, three, and the fourth one was done out of shot, of course. And it's pretty secure, I can't argue with them. Well, you can see there it's not moving when I push it round in the hand, so it, yeah, it's fine, it works, it doesn't fall off, that's a good thing, very good thing. Now, into the box with the laser guided scissors. It's the only way you can get into a box. Some of you may recognise this parcel, if you do, put it in the comments. Tell me where it's from. And it's cut through the top, and we're in. Well, eventually. There we go. Now, first thing, you've got a little leaflet and some packaging, lots of packaging, lots of packaging. Uh, a thing you don't need to be interested in. And the Gigabyte NVIDIA GTX 560 Ti Super Overclock Edition. Now, it comes in a box that's about the size of a motherboard box, normally, in my opinion. So, it is pretty big, and it's got lots of information all over it. Lots of useless information that you don't really need to know. So, open the box, let's see what we get inside. Out it comes. It's a nice shiny box with another nice shiny label on it. As you'll see here, it says Super Overclock. Yes, it's a super overclocking ability, or super overclocked. Now the first cable, I pulled it out, I didn't know what it was, I'd never seen one of these before. But it's a HDMI to mini HDMI. I didn't know they existed, but hey, there we go. And then I looked through this paper stuff, you get a disc, a manual, and a manual in a foreign language, which doesn't have to be as good as the manual, apparently. Whatever, Geekabyte, whatever. I got the graphics card here, which is pretty big, but we'll get to that in a second. And see what else we get. We have two Molex pins to a six-pin adapter, in case your uh, case doesn't have a six-pin adapter. There's VGA to DVI, in case your monitor's VGA, and then another six-pin adapter thing. And the graphics card, of course, the main event. Can't really see it through the static packaging, so I'm going to show you it through here. Show you up close through the static packaging. As you can see, you can see. So it's using the Windforce cooling system, which is used on another one of their 560s, I've noticed. And, well, nothing much else on it that you can see through the packaging. So, let's take the old graphics card out. The ATI HD Radeon 5770. Awesome card. But hopefully not as awesome as this. Otherwise I've wasted my money. But I'll have to take a hard drive out, because this new graphics card is so big graphics card out, and then we've just got to fight with the anti stack packaging and the very, very sticky, sticky tape. Out it comes. Here we go. See, it's got caps on every adapter, to avoid you damaging it. And here we are. Now we can see it. See, it's got two fans. It's got some nice stickers all over it, telling you what it is. But it's definitely a GTX 560 Ti. And there's no heatsink on the back, which surprised me. I expected one there, but hey, it's clearly got a huge one on the front. Which surprised me, actually, as you can see between the card and the heatsink. And with, like with the HD Radeon 5770, as you saw, it's all sealed up. So this, hopefully, is better cooling. You see these massive copper heat pipes. I'm told in the manual that they're solid, which is probably why it's so heavy. So we're going to put the graphics card in. It goes into the PCI Express x16 slot, as usual, for graphics cards. And you see the top part of mine clip on, there we go. 
and there we go, graphics card is in. And don't forget to screw it in. That's what I'm doing here, but in fast motion. As watching people screw screws in is obviously tedious. So I sped it up for you, so you don't have to watch as much. However, for this dual slot card, there is two screws. But yeah, once they're in, the card is secure, but it's not ready to go. I'm sure the more experienced of you have spotted the two 6-pin connectors on the right. But I'll get to them in a second. We can see we've got the SLI adapter with a nice rubber thing on it. Stop me damaging it. That's fair enough. And then on the right we've got these two 6-pin adapters. I'm sure some of you would have noticed, but others might not. That's why you got those two things in the graphics box. You may not have seen them before, but you may not have needed them. Thankfully my power supply has two built in. So I'm just going to plug those in, in fast motion again. Here we go. But bear in mind, if you don't have any of the 6-pin adapters, you are going to have to use Molexes, and it's two Molexes to one 6-pin adapter. So make sure you've got enough. So there we go, all plugged in. Can't argue with that. Let's see what happens when we fire it up. It's a nice set of green lights. That blue light is my motherboard. But nice green lights are from the graphics card, as you can see. I have the fan blowing air straight onto it, just to keep it nice and cool. I figure with those heat pipes there, it works brilliantly. Then you'll need to install your drivers. Obviously you have a tiny screen at this point. And then benchmark it. Just so I can show you how good it goes. We're going to run 3D Mark VI. Now, here's a few frame rates I took from the actual 3D Mark VI thing. Benchmarking, whatever you want to call it. But you can see, good solid frame rate. Can't argue with that. The card is clearly going to be excellent, but... How excellent. Well, let's find out. Viewing out my results online, we get 18,949 3D marks, which is brilliant. But of course, when you've done this, let's say you've already got this card, or maybe you've got a card equivalent to it in the ATI thing, like the 69 or something, get folding at home. Oh, it's. It does your computer no harm. And I'm a big supporter of it. Helps cure diseases and other stuff. I downloaded it. And you even get to look at the cool proteins folding. I've covered up some icons so I'm not product placementing or something. But yeah, my team is 123464 if you want to join me. Now, my initial impressions of this card, I don't know how long this bit's going to go on for, by the way, just in case you're in a rush. But my initial impression of this card is it's good. It does seem to have a little high-pitched whine when it's running at full capacity. I've got the Folding at Home GPU 3 client for the NVIDIA cards, and after that's been running for a bit, it does tend to squeak a little bit. But that could be the fans, or it could be the actual GPU, I don't know. If the temperature gets to about 60, the whine starts, and if the temperature starts about 40, then it's not there. But it's powerful, I don't really care. Very powerful. Uh, it's quite a big card, as you saw. It's, uh, I don't know, how big would I call that? Just over a foot. Going back to the old NVIDIA 8600, 8800s. I can't remember, 88 or 86. Going back to those sort of sizes. But less thin, it's a bit thicker. But, it's a good card. You saw how good it was on 3D Mark VI. Folding at home, it's just eating through the work units at the moment. It's already done two by this point. So I've had the card not even six hours. And, well, I can't fault it, apart from that little, little wine. But, whatever, it's a little, little wine. It's not going to bother me. I've got headphones on most of the time. Not going to hear it. There is a lot of heat coming off it, but you'd expect that. And, I don't know, I can't think of anything else. If you have a question, maybe I'll do a questions video about this. So put it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.